maybe four of the James Carls. Put that special emphasis on the Australia champions that first bend. The clock starts when they get just in front of us. So just one lap of the circuit. Chance for us then to see the Australian champions here in the UK. They've come over for what they consider to be a very complete season this year. 
primarily of course for the sidecar speedway series that will start. First meeting is the 22nd of June up at Coventry. Other dates can be confirmed, but if you're looking for spaces in your diary, it's all going to be happening between July and August. Run as a Grand Prix series this year, not as a test series last year, so it's all for individuals this year. So it would be well worth following the sidecar Grand Prix series. More news in the press, of course, to see how that goes on. But we've grass track this afternoon, and Gary Moon looking to see if he can beat all our traditional English grass track riders. His time, the time for the rest of the beat, 22.85, so 22.85 seconds. That's the time that's been set up by Gary Moon and Paul Norton. Five other riders to come out of the pit gate to have one lap by themselves. They, of course, have got to try and beat. They know the time now. It's 22.85. We've been giving out times during Pregnant. Off that top bend, another man that's so very, very interested in the sidecar speedway circuits. He's been across to Australia, was very successful in Australia racing sidecar outfits. Has come back to the UK, of course. We can go back right the way back through the record books and find that Paul Binfold appeared here at the Ace of Aces when he very started. So interesting to see him back here and interesting to see him having a go on the grass track. He was second in the Jim Coles in 1987, second again in 1988. He missed it in 89 and 90, he was back again in 1991. And again, looking at the time, we thought it was going to be quicker, but it's 23.56. So, Gary Moon's time at 22.85, still not beaten. So, he was saying he lies in the southern centre, but of course he's from the western part of the country as well. However, today we have the Jim Coles 1991. You can see that the riders have started up here from the pit box, ready for the start of the 1991 meeting. John Hiscock, I can see, is up there already. Lennon Ray Foreman. Gary Moon. Jerry Adams already on the start line. Roger Mesa has now appeared, so it's perhaps only waiting for Steve Jewison. You can see the red overalls of Steve Jewison just in that pit box. Yeah. Pushing the bike to get it started, indeed they're underway. So the start are now calling them all over to the start line. Yeah. What a tremendous lineup we've got for the first race of the afternoon. Those of you that were at the presentation of the Barks Bonanza will remember Roger's comments that uh, he's got on the tip of uh, his mind. What he can't get out of his mind, I should say, is that he's concentrating on beating this Australian. Well, this Australian is here again, and they're right next to each other on the start line. So if there is anything tactical, of course, in that start, which is, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of out there been into grass tracks as many years as I have, you know exactly what I mean when I say about the tactics on the start line. You'll see nobody will want to be the first to come in the line. It looks as if they're almost ready to go. One or two passengers still with arms in the air. Steve Jewison still not turned ready for the start. Well, if I can uh, switch your mind back to uh, just over a month ago at the Battle of Britain down at Tunbridge, those of you that did travel down to Tunbridge will remember that the Australian champions really couldn't get out of the gate to save their lives on that day. They uh, had to do all their winning from the back. So we look and see whether it's going to be the same story today, and it's Roger Misa that's made the break. So looking at that first corner, it looks like Gary Moon and Paul Norton have made it. Jerry Adams is up there in third place, Steve Jewison just up behind them. It's Roger Beeson that's got away, and you might remember in the barn record he went very, very wide on this part of the circuit. He's done the same again, but he dives back in front of Gary Moon going into the pit bend. Gary Moon pulling it very, very tight, coming into the middle of that pit bend. It goes down the back straight with Roger Beeson still in front of him. Roger Beeson breaks away going down that back straight, and into the top corner it is Roger Beeson and Steve Bailey that lead. Gary Moon pulls it tight again, but this time Roger doesn't make the same mistake. He pulls it very, very tight on the exit of that top bend, and he's already got five or six bike lengths on the second place, Gary Moon. Steve Hewison has moved himself up into third place in front of Jerry Adams. John Hiscock a long way back from those front four. But as we look to the front, it is Roger Beeson that's getting away from Gary Moon. Steve Hewison closing the gap slightly as he come up that back straight. One more lap to go in the first race of the afternoon, and it's a fabulous lead for Roger Misa and Steve Bailey. Gary Moon still there though in second place. Steve Jewison, this is where Jewison looks a lot quicker, going down that back straight, closes up, going into the top corner. It's going to be the first check and bag of the afternoon for Roger 
Georgia Mesa and Steve Bailey. Second place is Gary Moon and Paul Norton. Steve Jewison and Dave Ward in third. Jerry Adams crosses the line in fourth and John Hiscock fifth. It's two. Yes. John Halsey, of course, we've been informed, is a non-starter. And Greg True is rustling. And Paul Urich. Number 10, we've seen uh, them out in the barn record. That's Marty Baker and Shane Can. Grid 4 is Andy Sugg and new passenger for this afternoon is Steve Robbins. Number 19, coming to Grid 5, is uh, Terry Phillips and Kevin Williams. And number 23, Gary Jackson, Ian Harris. So, Roy and Ken Spedry coming in in place of John Horsey. That makes up the complete grid of six outfits. Just across that far side, looks like Russell just about made into that first bend. But as I say that, you can see it's Andy Sugg that really made that tremendous start. He's ready to take the much wider line because Russell and Paul Uric come underneath them going around that first bend. That's how it is as they go into the pit bend for the first time. It's Russell Ling and Paul Urich leading Andy Sugg and Steve Robbins. Martin Baker and Shane Can have got themselves up in the third. From Andy Sugg and Steve Robbins, Martin Baker and Shane Can tucked in there very, very tight indeed on that top corner. They still hold third from Gary Jackson, Roy Spreadbury pulling out as he comes by us and Terry Phillips pulling up the back marker. He comes round the top end to take the last lap flag this time. Getting away a little bit from Andy Sugg, but Andy Sugg pulling it very, very tight. Interesting to see how the combination of Andy Sugg and Steve Robbins get on this afternoon, but Gary Jackson has moved through in the third. So getting past Marty Baker in the third spot, Gary Jackson and Ian Harris. Come for the last time. So, race two. First out in four, Russelling and Paul Urich is going to be a checkered flag for them as they come by us. Andy Sugg and Steve Robbins get second. Gary Jackson and Ian Harris get third. Marty Baker and Shane Can come across the line at 4 4. No. So, race three we move into and a chance to see a lot of outfits for all the first time. They must have seen how Roger Misa is performing. Equally so, rustling winning his first ride out. Looking at the lineup then over race three, we've got Richard Piggott on the grid one. We've got Ken Lane on grid two. Neville Penfold, grid three. Andy Nourish, grid four. Rob Cameron, grid five. And Rob Wilson, grid six. That's how they line up. And you see, see looking to see perhaps uh, how Ken Lane and Mark Edwards perform. Look very, very good in the barn record. Nice to see Richard Piggott and Martin Bailey getting back into the last track sidecar racing. And they break the look to that far side. It looks a very, very good start. There it is, the dive to that first corner. But Ken Lane comes through on the inside. Ken Lane moves up in the second place. It was indeed Richard Piggott that had made it to the front, and it's Piggott that's going to on the inside of Ken Lane as they go into that pit bend. Richard Piggott then moves on the inside of Ken Lane, tries to go through the inside of Rob Cameron as well as they go down that back straight. Again, Ken Lane drives in very, very hard to try and get on the inside in the second spot, but it is Richard Piggott and Martin Bailey that are making the best of this one. They come by us. Ken Lane is still there in second. My apologies, there was of course Rob Wilson that's up there in third, Rob Cameron is up in the fourth place. My apologies to all the Rob Wilson fans. All third at the moment. But as we watch the leader, it is still Richard Big and Martin Bailey that have got away. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards still there in second. And a bit of a tussle going on for that third place between Rob Wilson and Rob Cameron. Bailey. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards get second. 
Now Rob Wilson comes across the line for third and Rob Cameron fourth place. So, he apologises to everybody for his poor performance at the start of the season, but I'm sure he more than made up for it by borrowing his old bike and riding at the Barks Bonanza, where he was absolutely superb. The new bike is now altered to the dimensions of the old one, and we hope to see Alan and John Blewett going well again as the season unfolds. But the rest of the lineup is Paul Pinfold, Beth Litherick going in grid two. Mike Cameron, Paul Randall going in grid three. Dave Steer and of course Alan Cave. Mick of course getting injured earlier on in the season. He is here today but I notice he's still got the crutches with him. So Alan Cave steps in as passenger for Dave Steer. Shane Baker, ride number 21 goes into grid five. He and Clinton Martin. And in grid six, for the first time on the grass track circuit, Mark Hewson and Clive Malloy. second, Mike Cameron moving up into third, and Paul Pinfold has been left at the start. So we look to see if Pinfold can come through the field, because already he starts to pick off the field. Mark Newson back there as well. So Paul Pinfold and Mark Newson having problems in their first ride, but as we look to the front, it is Alan Blewett that's still under pressure from Shane Baker and Clinton Martin. There are They get away from Shane Baker going into that top end. Go a little bit wide though. Shane Baker has seen the gap and looks to go for it right on the inside of Alan Blewett. Those two outfits almost together as they came past us. This time he looks for the hole on the top corner and gets through on the inside. That looks to me to be problems for Alan Blewett. His arm goes up in the air. Mike Cameron goes through in the second. So now Mike Cameron looks to close that gap. Four big Still there in third place. Mark Newton just behind him. Dave Steer that's trying to close up on those two Speedway style outfits, but as we look to the front, it's a good ride from Shane Baker and Clinton Martin. Mike Cameron and Paul Randall not really being able to close the gap at the moment. Folks going into that top end see perhaps the difference in some of these outfits there. Some look very much quicker going down that back straight. But as the checkered flag goes, it's a win for Shane Baker and Clinton Martin. Second place to Mike Cameron and Paul Randall. Third place to Paul Pinfold and Beth Diderick. And on the line that looked just to be Mark Newson. Three in race five. You also, of course, will have already, already deleted number nine, B. Baker. But uh, Bill Badham does reappear in race six. Question of uh, three drivers sharing uh, two quads, I believe. Right then. So, John Elliott, Tom Howe, Huey Smith, Phil Badham, Richard Badham, Mark Wood, and Andy Rhymes. That's the field. This is certainly new territory for the Jim Coles. Right, the starter is making sure that the outfits, <laughs> outfits I can say, the quads are exactly where they want them. goes up, it's a clean start, down the hill they charge, who's going to get here, looks as though John Elliott is going well, up ahead of him, it's uh, Phil Badham's, but John Elliott slots in at the head of things, Phil Badham's now in second place, as we look across to the far side, it looks like Tom Howe up into third, so then, it's the expert across the side car driver, John Elliott who's got the advantage, and already he's powering away from the opposition, so number one, John Elliott on the 500, on the wasp from Pangborn, leading this one. It's number five, Phil Badham's up there in second place. In third place is Mark Wood. In fourth place it's Andy Grimes. Well, a mixture of capacities as I mentioned earlier on, and that 500 Honda Power really works. Pulling away from the opposition on slightly smaller capacity machine. Meanwhile, then, John Elliott hangs out the tail, comes around towards us once again. So it's still John Elliott now who is in second place. Number five is there, still Phil Badham. Then seven and eight battling out, Mark Wood and Andy Grimes just ahead of Louis Smith. And number two, Tom Howe making his way through, seemed to drop back a little bit after that. Meanwhile, then, the leader on his own really now, John Elliott it is, on the 500 Honda One. One more lap to go and a tremendous lead, the length of the finish straight already now. Coming up into second place, number seven it is, Mark Wood who fills the place.
Christ now, a head off Phil Bannon. Tucked in behind him, Andy Grimes is moving through. But to our left, it's a clear victory for number one for John Elliott as he comes down the finishing straight, receives the second flag. Victory then for John Elliott. Now uh, quite a battle going on for second place. Number seven it is, it looks as though Mark Wood has come on to it. Mark Wood then in second place. Phil Ballum's in third. In fourth place, Andy Grimes. In fifth place, number four, Huey Smith. And a little way back, a battle going on for sixth place. And it's taken by number six, Richie... Slossing in behind him, Paddy Thorne. And Paddy Thorne inching by, trying to get the advantage down the slope there. Number 11 is Paddy Thorne. Looks as though Paddy Thorne's had to give way back a little way on the leader now. Number 14, Neil Griffiths from Paddy Thorne in second place. George Penfold is in third, just being overtaken, pushed back to fourth because Chris Bartlett goes up to third. So then coming towards us. Neil Griffiths is still in there. In fact, he's now pulling away from Paddy Thorne. And in third place, Chris Bartlett. In fourth place, George Penfold. Uh, Neil Griffiths now then, number 14. Off the 250 Honda, the Welshman Blues flying along. One more lap to go as they come around again. And once again, one fan seems to be dominating the event. Neil Griffiths then goes by. In second place is Paddy Thorne. In third place, number 13, George Penfold. One pulls out with a blowout in the middle there. Then uh, number three, Bill Ballams comes by. Bill who's done sand racing, grass pack racing. And now he's on the quad. Here we go, then the leader coming round again. Number 1450, Neil Griffiths, the Welshman, goes for the line. Neil Griffiths is it who wins. In the second place, Paddy Thorne. In the third place, George Penfold. Then at number three, Bill Barham, just ahead of number 18, Jesse Moody. And then Richie Rhodes bringing up the tail end of the field. Man from uh, the Bristol area who's going so well. Obviously a big future there. Mike Courage coming in in place of John Boston. Jeremy Doncaster, the winner of the Ace of Aces. Gary Love, another of those very fast young Cornish riders. And Richie Knight, again from Bristol. That's the field. This is race seven. up there. The starting team are not happy. Somebody is getting caught up in that uh, starting tape. Well, Richard Knight apparently is uh, now riding Speedway with Exeter, so uh, interesting to see how that young rider develops. as they go into the first banner, Doncaster inches by Jeremy Doncaster then. Andy Smith in second place. Looks like Mike Wood is up in third. Well, we'll be Gary Long in fourth. We'll pick those up as they come round. But it's Jeremy Doncaster at the moment who leads from Andy Smith in second place. So any racers up ahead of things. Clayton Williams in third. Gary Long in fourth. Behind him at number 20, Stuart Williams. Paul Horry is a long way back. He's really 
Recently, you may have heard me uh, very happy to announce that Andy Riley, in fact, is here with us and watching and hoping to be fit and well in the not too distant future after that heavy tumble he had in France. Not his fault at all. Meanwhile, then, down through the middle is Martin Hagen. Martin, who switched from Westlake Power, and in fact, he gets overtaken around that far, and it's Hagen back to second place. Uh, Uh, come through on the Wasp uh, Shotty Gordon and Will James it is who leads from Martin Hagen in second place in third place is Peter Lloyd in fourth place number 25 John Walmsey well two of the laid down motors really flying and Hagen looks to be in trouble then he seems to slow right down to the top of the really nice he really does look very stylishly at home on this machine so it's Will James then who leads Martin Hagen still there, keeping the pressure on in second place. Third place, Peter Lloyd. Behind him, John Walsey. And then at number 12, Bobby Graham. Well, we reckon that uh, Will James is probably out on his GM this time. He did use the Gordon in practice, but it's the GM this time, we believe. And it's Will James' power that's certainly working for him. Still Martin Hagen in second place. Still Peter Lloyd in third. Then John Walsey. So then, can Martin Hagen do anything about the flying coins for that? Cornish riders are really coming through now and going well. Years he's been the, the best of the Cornishmen, and he wins just ahead of Martin Hagen. And in third place, 
Charlie Speed Alloy, then John Walmsey, then at number 12, Bobby Graham, and then number 19, Rob Camden. As I said, Will has uh, upheld the honour of Cornwall on his own for quite a while, and uh, he must be delighted to see the young riders following his example. He is at a peak at the moment. Don't worry, Jim, I'm going to make up for it in the next few weeks. I'm glad about that, Tony, because I could do with my voice getting a few rests. However, we will move into race 10. We've got the sidecars already coming to the start line. It's the Jim Cole sidecar, of course. It's the second leg, and the lineup consists of Gary Jackson, Dave Steer, Andy Norwich, Paul Pinfold, Russelling, and Steve Jewison right on the outside. Russelling, of course, had a win first time out. Two third places in this one, Paul Pinfold and Steve Jewison. So it's the outside that we've got to look for, perhaps those outfits that are to the far side of that start line. Problems for Paul Pinfold on the start line by the look of it. Star Marshall's just pulling him back slightly. A lot of anxious people rushing over to that outfit. Oh, Paul Pinfold climbs back on. Pulls the outfit to take the tape break this time and do it. as they come round this rustling and Paul Urich that close up and cut across the exit of that first bend. Steve Jewison and Dave Ward up there in second place. Gets very, very close in that top corner and he's just been warded, but... Paul Pinfold not being able to make very good of it this time as he drops back another place at the back of the field. But as we look to the front, Russell and Paul Urich that really do look to be in tremendous form at this moment in time. They come round off that top corner. One more lap to go in race two. Remember they won first time out. Steve Jewison still there in second place. Dave Steer is holding third. Gary Jackson has now moved up into fourth in front of Andy Norris. Still Pinfold, Paul Pinfold back there. Martin Baker, Shane Can, Grid 4. Gary Moon in Grid 5. And Richard Pickett, Grid 6. So again, we're perhaps looking at that far side. You can see the three outfits that go to that far side of the start line. Martin Baker, Gary Moon and Richard Pickett. Three very, very quick outfits. Will be very interesting to see. We've seen that... Uh, Russelling and Steve Jewison made excellent starts from those outside two grids. We sometimes come to expect the good start positions to be around the centre of the start line, but Steve Jewison proving that you can come from that outside grid. The last of the outfits coming into line. the force Gary Moon to go wide but Richard Pickett has been able to get away Richard Pickett it is that dives into that pit bend for the first time leading from Gary Moon and Paul Norton who've got themselves back into second place John Hiscock and Shane Lapham are up there in third quarter at the moment as we look down the back straight you can see Richard Pickett and Martin Bailey that really do look to be back on form they come past us for the second time leading from the Australian champions Gary Moon and Paul Norton John Hiscock and Shane Lapham now under pressure from Mark Newson and Clive Malone. They move up into fourth as Marty Baker and Shane Cann drop further down the field. We'd love to see if there's going to be a scrap for that third place. Because when you look at the front, it is Richard Bigot that's really getting away. Looks to be enjoying it. 
this afternoon. One more lap to go for Richard Pickett and Marty Bing. Gary Moon and Paul Norton still doing second, but I said about the clash for third place, it is Mark Newton that's gone through. Mark Newton has got through in front of John Hiscock, but Richard Pickett's out with problems. Top corner we see Gary Moon and Paul Norton take the checkered flag. Mark Newson comes through for second. Martin Blakey gets through in the third place, just on the finishing line. But problems, as you can all see, for Richard Piggott and Martin Bailey. It looks as if they are going to come round to pick up that finishing position. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> So, race 11 finished, we move into race 12, the outfits are already coming to the line, we've seen two of our first leg winners, Richard Pickett of course very unfortunate, rustling kept a clean sheet, as we look to race 12 we've got Shane Baker coming to the line, he won first time out, on the grid next to him is Rob Cameron, then Mike Cameron, Neville Penfold, and on grid 5, Roger Mesa, who also won first time out. Taking the place of John Horsley is Roy and Ken Spreadbury. They take grid six. Riding number two, of course. As I look across that far side, it looks as if there's problems for Rob Cameron. It does indeed look as if it is the outfit of Rob Cameron and Steve Smith that's been pushed off to the centre of the circuit. Well, I can't quite see what the problems are, but both Rob and Steve removing their helmets taking no part in race 12. So only five outfits coming to the line. There are sorts of problems on that start line by the look of it, but it does look as if we have got the riders now coming into line. Oh, and interesting, perhaps we've been seeing those outside gates prove to be the better at the moment. Roger Mesa is right out there on grid five. You see the white leathers moving to come into place. The rest of the outfits move to the line. Royce Redbreed are not pleasing our starters, being manually pushed back from the tapes. Again, he gets pushed back. <laughs> Still can't quite see, even stretching for the binoculars, what the problem is on that start line, but most of the outfits look to me to be started. Passengers getting back onto the outfit, so uh, looks as if we should be having a go. We get underway. Pinfold it is, has dived into second place. Shane Baker is up there in third at the moment. As they come round off that top corner, you can see that Shane Baker's gone really, really tight. Roger Mesa is there in first place, but it's Shane Baker that's now moved up into second. Neville Penfold is still there in third, and Mike Cameron in fourth at the moment. As they go down the back straight, Roger Mesa and Steve Bailey open up a little bit. They go in that top end, some seven or eight five lengths between them and second place, Shane Baker. Problems for Mike Cameron as Paul Randall puts his hand in the air and he falls off. So as we look to the front, no change from that first lap. It's Roger Meester and Steve Bailey leading from Shane Baker and Clinton Martin. Neville Penfold, John Mitchell, still there in third. Now getting away from the rest of the depleted field as Alphys disappear off the circuit all the way round. And as we see, the last lap flag go out. It's Roger Meester that comes past us, but this looks to be a good scrap between... Shane Baker, as we get absolutely showered in stones, I think the window stayed intact. Shane Baker it is, it's just about money to hang on to it. Mm -hmm. so that said it was going to be a race to the line because Neville Penfold goes through. Neville Penfold and John Mitten drive into that top corner. It might have been that they've gone a little bit wide. 
Shane Baker comes back at him as they cut across the racing line of Neville Penfold. That's yet another puncher by the look of it for Neville Penfold. Indeed it is. So Neville Penfold, another one of our very experienced outfit drivers, managing to hang on to it. And of course, picking up a third place. First time out, he goes in grid one. Jerry Adams, fourth first time out, he goes in grid two. Andy Sugg and Steve Robbins, they were second first time out, so looking perhaps for race 13, they're in grid three. Grid four is number 14, Leonard Ray Foreman. Grid five is number seven, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Again, a second place, first time out, so perhaps looking to win this one. Sixth grid, right on the outside, is Alan and John Blewett.
Alright, looks in your program number five is of course A. Adams, but it is Bill Adams. some catching this afternoon. Paddy Thorne still in second. George Penfold now has moved into third and what a good effort that is. There's a little story attached to George Penfold which they said that I wouldn't say over the microphone but I'm going to. He came here this morning without a seat. Can you imagine riding one of those things without a seat? They blame his catching. Can you see that? And he's old fashioned when he used to ride grass track outfits. Well, there's one very embarrassed mechanic sitting in the pits now because George Penfold had to borrow a seat from somebody before he knew he could take part this afternoon. Going very, very well in third place. He tells me he's actually hanging up on the garage door. He's making the mechanic for that. Can you see that? But this is the man that's going to take some catching this afternoon. John Elliott looks to be making it here this afternoon. Another win for him. Paddy Thorne comes round for second place. George Penfold gets third. Bill Madam comes across the line for fourth place. And completing the line up there is number seven, Mark Wood. Jesse Moody looking to make up, uh, finishing a fairly lowly position his first outing, but he's uh, got out in front of this one, so it's Jesse Moody with the lead as they go down the back straight, but he's being pressed on. But at the moment then, Jesse Moody hanging on grimly, somebody uh, very, very wide on the top then, but it's Jesse Moody who leads. In second place, Challenger Hard is indeed Neil Griffiths, and as Neil Griffiths goes by in third place, it's Huey Smith. Huey Smith, the man who used to look after the speedway surface at the uh, old Reading Stadium, I'm told. Gosh, we've got some huge information in here. Meanwhile, then, it's Neil Griffiths seeking his second win of the afternoon. I think they're making these facts up and feeding them to me, actually. In second place, then, number four, Huey Smith comes through. Number 18, Jesse Moody, having led for their first lap in trouble. Right there, on the far side. The leader now, right out of way from the opposition. And it's still Neil Griffith. Neil really uh, reveling in this very fast track here this afternoon. Huey Smith in second. Andy Grimes in third. And behind him, Richard Baddams. Got a much depleted field now. We look to our left. for second place. Who's going to get there? Four and eight is there. It looks as though Huey Smith will just about hang on. He does. Just ahead of Andy Grimes. And then, behind the pair of them, Richard Baddams. So then, looking for a race 16. No number 11. No number 24. We have uh, Richie Knight. We have Mike Courage. We have Mike Beaumont. We have Rob Camden. We have Bobby Graham. And we have Clayton Williams. The birthday boy himself. Takes the wide approach into the bend, closes up on the bend, and then accelerates out the other side. So then, it's the former champion and former European champion, Rob Kubik, down in Gloucestershire, leading this one. So Clayton Williams, then, the winner of last year's event, will be flying along the pressure. 
pressure coming from number 10, it's Richie Knight, the young Exeter rider who's just ahead of Mike Beaumont. So Richie Knight then. And uh, good to see this young rider going so well. Fire still Mike Bowen in third, a fallen rider on the top bend now in fourth place is number 12, Bobby Graham. And behind him, at number nine, Mike Courage. Well then, Clayton Williams who comes back again and he's still being chased by Richard Knight. And Richard Knight really taking a good line and in fact he momentarily takes the lead and Clayton Williams has to use all that experience to come round the long way. And that speedway experience that I can is really showing for Richard Knight. Richard Knight in second place, Clayton Williams wins, Richard Knight in second place. In third place it's going to be Mike Beaumont. In fourth place, number 12, Bobby Graham, just ahead of number 9, Mike Courage. So the field then assembling for race 17 on the start line. So we can hear the rev as the gate goes up into another nice clean start. Trevor Banks tries to get the weight in the right place, but it's number five. It's Andy Smith who goes to the head of things. So Andy Smith who went into the bend with an ever-increasing lead as he powers right away. So it's Gary Lobb then leading the challenge from the rest of the field, but this is Andy Smith at his best, really flying along. Gary Lobb in second, Martin Hagen in third, Trevor Banks in fourth, Peter Lloyd in fifth as they pass us. That looks like Stuart Williams tucked in behind. So then, on the far side. Really flying. So it's Andy Smith there, holding off Gary Lobb. And Trevor Banks has come through now ahead of Martin Hagen. And Peter Lloyd is hounding Martin Hagen. Martin not seen to be at his best today. Smith it is, will lead going into the last lap. From Gary Lobb, from Trevor Banks, from Martin Hagen. And Hagen is now fighting back. Staying ahead of Peter Lloyd and looking for Trevor Banks. Off the far side then. Believe it. On his own. Speed up sideways action. Victory for Andy Smith. Second place, Gary Lobb. In third place, Trevor Banks. In fourth place, Martin Hagen. And in fifth place, Peter Lloyd. Just ahead of number 20, Stuart Williams. Then number seven, Mark Dimmer. Number 
25, John Walmsley, just ahead of number 21, Andy Parker. And then behind number 14, Nigel Gray. Throw in, Jeremy Doncaster. Got another little bit of room. Speed up. Riding, graceful action from Jeremy Doncaster. Peter more aggressive. Hanging on to second place ahead of Will James. And behind him, number eight, Paul Hurry. And nice it is to see Paul Hurry. Riding with the uh, skill of action. Oh, that's Victory then for Jeremy Doncaster. Peter Reid in second place. Will James in third. Paul Hurry in fourth. In fifth place, John Walmsley. And behind him, number 21, Andy Parker. Just ahead of number 14, Nigel Green. So then, Rob Wilson. Len Foreman, Steve Dewison, Neville Penfold, Mark Newsom, and Mick Cameron. Those are the drivers. The crews, as you can see, are making their way across. challenges up the inside, Rob Wilson keeps the power on down the outside, and Wilson is still there, it's Wilson from Jewison, from Foreman, from Mike Cameron, and Jewison it is again, powering Brian makes it up the inside this time, and Rob Wilson went to one side, and Rob Wilson now back to second, but going after the Steve Jewison and Dave Ward are that leading crew as they come round towards us once again for the checker flag, Steve Jewison and Dave Ward it in. Rob Wilson, Vince Jones in second place, Leonard Ray Foreman in third, and in fourth place, Mike Cameron and Paul Randall. Coming to the line, if we look at the lineup, it is Dave Steer on grid one, Andy Sugg and Steve Robbins in grid two. Replacement for John Halsey, of course, is Ray uh, Roy and Ken Spreadbury. My apologies. In grid four, Richard Piggott goes. And in grid five, Alan Blewett. Grid six is Andy Nourish. So let's look at what they've done before. I think all our eyes might well be on grid four. That's Richard Piggott and uh, Martin Bailey. They had a win first time out. And of course, suffered very badly with that puncher second time out where they were leading, which allowed Gary Moon to come through and win. So looking perhaps to make up for slight disadvantage in their second ride. 
Andy Sugg and Steve Robbins there with a second first time out, third second time out, so they'll perhaps be looking to catch Richard Biggin. And it's those two outfits to break. It's Sugg on the inside and Biggin on the outside to go in that first bend. Andy Sugg and Steve Robbins look to go very, very wide and Richard Biggin looking to come through on the inside of them. Richard Biggin is, holds it tight and moves through. A great corner from him. Andy Sugg slots in the second place. Sugg in second place. Dave Sear and Alan Cavett is the whole third at the moment from Roy Ken Spreadbury. And we all keep our fingers crossed to see Richard Bigger and Martin Bailey come around once again. You know, they're in this position in their last ride. Here's the Panama Hall this afternoon. But great to see Richard Bigger back in this sort of form. Andy Sugg is still there in second place. Dave Steer and Alan Cave holding third. Well, as you can see, the effort that Richard Biggins went into his riding, he almost rides as a passenger as well. You can see he dips his head down when he wants to get that drive out of the bend. Comes around off that top bend, exactly as I was saying, head goes down. Checkered flag for them this time. Andy Sugg and Steve Robbins get second. It's another good position for them. Dave Steer and Alan Cave crossing the line for third. Race 21 then we move on to. It's a grid one position for Terry Phillips and the birthday boy Kevin Williams. Grid two is Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Remember perhaps they've had a second first time out. They won their second ride. But coming to grid three, we've got Roger Misa, who had a win first time out, a win second time out. But look what we've got on grid four. Russelling and Paul Urich also a win first time, a win second time. So these are the only two crews that come into the third leg with two wins apiece. A great lineup complemented by on grid five, Rob Cameron, and a grid six, John Hiscock. So, what a tremendous race this one looks to be. Two maximum scorers so far, and Ken Lane at just one point adrift from them. And a lot of anxious moments, I'm sure you can appreciate, as the riders don't really want to be the first to the line. I can see Russelling and Paul Urich already are in place. Rob Cameron now lining himself up. He's on the outside of Russelling in grid five. John Hiscock and Shane Lapham also there in place. Roger Misa now comes into line, joined by Ken Lane. Terry Phillips and Kerry Williams, the last to come into line. They now move around the back of the start. The old grid one, of course. So the riders all ready to go for race 21, and what a promising one this looks to be. Ken Lane comes underneath Roger Misa. Roger Misa getting showered by stones, goes very, very wide. The rest of the Alp is taking evasive action to avoid him. John Hiscock having to pull off the circuit, as you can see. It's rustling. Ken Lane having to avoid behind them. Rustling and Bullyurin get away from the rest of the field. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards still there in second. Rob Cameron has moved himself up into third place. Is Steve Smith in his chair? Still there in fourth, and Roger Misa looks to have recovered now, and it comes back in the fifth place. So we we'll look to see if he can back catch up on the rest of the field. It's asking an awful lot of him, but as we look to the front, it's a great ride once again from Russelling and Paul Urich. They lead as they take the last lap flag. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards hold second. Rob Cameron and Jim Smith still there in third place. So is Terry Phillips, so Roger Meester is going to make up those positions that he wanted to by default perhaps of the other bikes. But the checkered flag goes for his third win of the afternoon for Russelling and Paul Urich. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards get second and I really don't expect that Roger Meester is going to come round and get this 
third place. So indeed, he finishes in third after that mishap in the first lap. All sorts of problems, and of course, John Hitchcock involved in avoiding Roger Mesa ends up in fourth place. Grid five, and right on the outside, Shane Baker in grid six. So, a very eventful race 21, an impressive lineup before it started, but an equally impressive lineup for race 22. Gary Moon, a second place and a first place. Shane Baker, a first place and a second place. So those two equally on points at the moment. Paul Pinfold anxiously looking to make up ground on them. Martin Baker also there has been in midfield positions. Gary Jackson could also get into the final with two good results in third and fourth leg rides. So already the outfits have made their way to the line. inside Gary Jackson there as well but going very wide and looks to have got away with it is Gary Moon and Paul Norton Shane Baker and Clinton Martin slot in the second place as they go into the pit bend for the first time Jerry Adams and Sean Pittock are still there in third Gary Jackson has got past Marty Baker and he himself in the fourth place and as we look for the front the Australian champion to the but lead as they come round off the top of that bend again they go very wide but they look to have the power on into the pit bend for the second time and Shane Baker losing his grip on uh, Gary Moon as he gets away going down that back straight where he does look at the power on going into this top corner he's a little bit tighter coming out of this bend to use the freedom that he's been given to just keep the power on one more lap to go Shane Baker and Clinton Martin still there in second We see the checker flag once again for the Australians. Gary Moon and Paul Norton. Shane Baker and Clinton Martin get second. Gary Jackson and Harris get third. Jerry Adams and Sean Pitto picking up fourth place. Well, as we move on to the courts, quickly go through the list of lineup. It looks as if we've got quite a depleted field. Let's check them as they go by. We've got number five, we've got number 11, 13. So, I can see George Pinfold there in third place. I can't understand why number 11 came out in this one, but I'm sure they have. And I was expecting to see Paddy Thorne go in the race 24, but depleted numbers, so I'm sure they've shuffled things around to uh, try and make the races as even as possible. And let's not take it away from the leader number five. That is, of course, uh, Phil Adam. He leads from Paddy Thorne in second. George Penfold up there in third. So I'm sure there's a lot of grass track supporters who will be pleased to see George Penfold going well. As I say that, you can see George Penfold move through into second place. Paddy Thorne not happy with that though. Paddy Thorne coming back round the outside. So a good scrap between these front three. George Penfold trying to ride a very tight line following Phil Badham. But Paddy Thorne going that extra little bit of distance but making out the best of it as he goes round the outside once again. Gets very, very close to George Pinfold, goes down the back straight. Never Pinfold looks a bit quicker. It's Pinfold that goes to the outside, round round the outside of Phil Badham. So this time Paddy Thorne slots on the inside and follows George Pinfold around because it's George Pinfold that leads. Bill Badham still there in second, but a good ride this from George Pinfold. Paddy Thorne looks to have lost it a little bit there, he's back in third place. Bill Badham still holding second. A very, very experienced motor rider, of course, George Pinfold. Drives fast track outfits as uh, well as to try his hand at a few solo racing as well.
So, a good win for George Pinfold in race 23. Well, not such a depleted entry in race 24. Looking perhaps for that number one plate of John Elliott. He's unbeaten already this afternoon, but could this one be a bit of a challenge to him? Number 14, Steve Griffiths. Printed in your program as Neil. Our apologies for that, but it is in fact Steve Griffiths we're informed. He's also unbeaten so far. So, two to watch for in this one. Looking for other good runners. We're perhaps looking... I was hoping to see Paddy Thorne out in this one, but of course we've seen him in race 23. He's had two seconds so far. So, away we go with race 24. And we're looking for that distinctive number one plate. It is number one that gets away. I'm confused now. <laughs> I'm going to assume that's Bill Banner riding number five. We know the buildings have a machine, so we reckon that's Bill Banner on number five. They're only doing it to confuse us, on it. <laughs> John Elliott is uh, no, no mistake at all about who it is that's leading. John Elliott leads. Oh. Bill Banner's fighting every inch of the way. So we number five there somewhere. My lap scorers are uh, ready extremely hard on this one. Eight of the white to see come round because the fighting really is for that second place. John Elliott really getting away from the rest of the field. There's number three, Bill Vadham. Um, oh, that's what's confusing us. He's got a three on the front and a five on the back. <laughs> I know I see the five somewhere along the line. <laughs> might be played 500 side cards. Well, put your own thoughts to that one. Well, I thought there might have been a scrap in this one between Steve Griffiths, number 14, who's holding second, and our leader, John Elliott. But it looks as if John Elliott really has, once again, made the race very determinedly here. He told me this morning that he's already won over a thousand races in different types of sports. This one's going to make it a few more. Oh. That's another checkered flag for him. Neil Griffiths gets second. Bill Adams gets third. So then the solos lining up. Peter Lloyd, Gary Lobb, who's been riding very well all afternoon. Richard Knight, Peter Reed, Clayton Williams, Stuart Williams, and Martin Hagen. Second place, Gary Lobb in third, Peter Reed in fourth, 
In fifth place, Peter Lloyd. And in sixth place, Richard Knight. Trevor Banks in third place and Andy Smith goes round the outside of Jeremy Doncaster. So it's Andy Smith from Jeremy Doncaster from Trevor Banks. Got a length or two behind, but keeping a wary eye on those stones coming up for Andy Smith's back wheel. So it's Andy Smith from Jeremy Doncaster from Trevor Banks. John Walmsley having a good afternoon here in fourth place as they passed us. Behind him. Unbelievably, was not in a British Speedway team for such a long while. Leading from Jeremy Doncaster, the Reading Racers team captain, goes for his benefit year this year. In third place is Trevor Banks. In fourth place, number 25, John Wall. Behind him, number seven, Mark Gibber. And this one pretty much under control. Just on the See the last lap flag. Uh, one lap to go board. As does Jeremy Doncaster. As does Trevor Banks. As does number 25, John Walmsley. Then at number 7, at Mark Dimmer. And then number 14, Michael Green. So then Andy Smith. Off the top there. Off the top side. Yet another victory for Andy Smith. In second place, Jeremy Doncaster. In third place, Trevor Banks. In fourth place, John Walmsley. In fifth place, number seven, Mark Dimmer. And then number, I was going to say 142 because I'm used to Nigel Green having 142. In fact, it's number 40. Mark Carson take up their positions on the start line. That's Mike Beaumont on the inside, Mike Courage alongside, then Bobby Graham and Will James towards the middle, Paul Hurry on his right, Andy Parker and Rob Camden. Gate goes up, they're away, the smoke rises, the dust rises, down the hill they come towards us. It's an even break with Will James just having the edge on Paul Hurry and Mike Beaumont sitting there in third place. So it's Will James then with Paul Hurry in second place, Mike Beaumont in third. Will James getting used to the uh, frame and riding it well. That's Will James then from Paul Hurry. Mike Beaumont, uh, a little bit of pressure on him from uh, number 19, Rod Camden, but uh, Mike has all the experience to hold off the challenge. James from Yuki. There's a lot of his summer, of course, riding all over Europe. Leading from Paul Hurry, the Arena Essex Speedway man, with Mike Beaumont, a man who's been in more European finals than any other rider in third place. Will James there, heading the field as they go into the last lap. Paul Hurry in second place, then Mike Beaumont. Then back a little way, we've got number 12, Bobby Graham, and behind him is Rod Camden. Will James it is then, it goes for victory. Will James wins, race 27. Paul Hurry in second place, Mike Beaumont in third. Behind him, number 19, Rod Camden. Then number 12, Bobby Graham. And behind him, number nine, Mike Courage. Well, I keep saying Mark Nelson, and most of you can see Mark Nelson's outfit out there in the center of the track. So uh, I guess we can say we're going to be one outfit light in uh, race 28. Well, 
Andy Soak's been making some good starts, so has Rob Wilson, and of course Gary Moon has had uh, some pretty good real rocking with the car there away. Moon on the inside, up the inside comes Rob Wilson, and with the Andy Soak is going with him. And uh, Gary Moon back in third place. Oh, and the first two, it's Soak and Wilson side by side and coming around the inside then. And Gary Moon in trouble as fast as goes Rob Wilson the lead and Gary Moon in trouble looks anxiously down at the back of the machine have they lost the chain or did he get another puncture? Oh, they're trying to fire up the machine. So then, on the far side, Rob Wilson leading the field. Down the hill they come. Looks like Andy Sugg is still in there. He is indeed in second place. In third place, number 20 as they pass us, Rob Cameron. And a real disaster there for Gary Moon out in the centre. Let's pick it up again, and it's Rob Wilson and uh, Vince Jones who comes around towards us once again in the second place. Number 20, Rob Cameron and Smith Smith. And Andy Sugg in trouble. They had that. Uh, looks as though the motor may have hesitated. They had a little bit of a They're in trouble on the top. Wow, man. Rob Wilson it is. As the checkered flag goes out, Rob Wilson and Vince Jones it is who wins. In second place, number 20, Rob Cameron and Smith Smith. And I think we're only going to have two finishers. Now then, uh, Gary Moon has got... Uh, results and he sug in fact did complete three quarters race distance so he is in fact a finisher in third place so number 15 in third place for Andy Sugg and Steve Robbins so the numbers are 24 20 and 15 the time one minute 29.06 race 29 then coming up Roger Mesa, Martin Baker, Andy Nourish, Shane Baker, Russ Ling and Steve Dewison Second place, Steve Jewison in third, rustling in fourth, and uh, Roger Mesa came very, very wide and lost a couple of places there. Comes back in, looks for a second, comes through and takes it, and Mesa comes through up the inside and goes for the lead again. Oh, I worried about Roger, Roger Mesa. Incredible bit of foot cornering on that top end. Steve Jewison in second place at the moment, but the pressure all on for the battle here. Roger Mesa leaves, Steve Jewison in second place. Number 21, it's Shane Baker just ahead of Russell Ng. Well, that was quite a top bend there. A couple of bends here at Greenway Bend. It's all certainly happening up there. Roger Mesa, back in front. Roger Mesa and Steve Bailey leading from Jason and Dave Ward. And in third place, number 21, Shane Baker and Flint Martin. And then Russell Ng. And they've got us again with the stones. Russell Ng and Paul Yorick. Well, in fact, they didn't get me with a stone, they got me with a glass, but never mind. And Jerusalem it is that's challenging. Uh, Jerusalem is challenging for Roger Mesa. All the way as they go up the bank. Well, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be a meeting here without a, a pane of glass going in this van, would it? Roger Mesa then heads down for the checker flag. Mesa wins. Steve Jerusalem in second place. Shane Baker in third. Russelling in fourth. And in fifth place, number 10, Martin Baker. This is 
Oh, thanks, Tony. I think the rest of the riders are going to have a struggle to follow that one because Roger Meese are in great form, but I was also watching the form of Steve Jewison. Looks to be back right on the song again. He was pushing all the way around, and it's great to see Steve Jewison and Dave Ward back in that sort of form. Tremendous race, as you quite rightly said, and we can only look forward to the big final at the end of the day. What can we expect? Because there was one or two riders that have been going well this afternoon who have also come in the sidecar class but weren't in that particular race. If we look at race 30, the lineup consists of Ken Lane, who's been having a good day so far, Dave Steer, Terry Phillips, Jerry Adams, Neville Penfold, and the replacement for John Halsley is, of course, Roy and Ken Spreadbury. As we look across to the uh, sideways as he comes round off that top bend holding a brilliant tight line so Ken Lane still in that brilliant form as they indeed go past us for the first time Neville Penfold now has moved up in the second place for the second time really does look to have it back on song Neville Penfold still pushing hard in second place with John Mitten in the chair. Jerry Adams has moved up in the third. Dave Steer in fourth place but under pressure from Terry Phillips as they go into that pit bend. Looking to the far side is still Ken Lane setting the pace. Here's Mark Edwards going to that top corner but Neville Penfold is getting close. Neville Penfold moving right up on the back wheel of Ken Lane as they go into the top corner. One more lap to go and Neville Penfold looking for the gap on the inside. Ken Lane must by now know he's there. He pulls a very tight line into that top end. Almost gets it sideways. Forces Neville Penfold to go around the outside. A brilliant corner from Neville Penfold. He's got a long, long way around. But a great corner from Neville Penfold. Ken Lane forced him in to go in the wide line. He eventually took it and went all the way around the outside. He's not over yet though as they come to the line. You can see Neville Penfold pushing it every inch of the way. A great ride from Neville Penfold and John Mitten. Ken Lane and Mark Edwards get second, a good scrap for third, and looked to me as if Dave Steer just got it on the line from Jerry Adams. But a great ride there from Neville Penfold and John Mitten. I think I haven't actually looked at the points, but I know Richard Piggott goes in this one. He's had two wins this afternoon and a disastrous sixth place when he also suffered a puncher earlier on this afternoon. So, interesting perhaps, I would look anxiously at the, the point scoring when we go into the interval. Because we wonder if a good performance this time will mean that he's done enough to get into the final. Can so often be the case that somebody that's consistently scored second and third places does nick that place in the final, even though a rider might have had two or three firsts. Well, we can but wait and see, because before that we've got race 31. If you look at the lineup, it's not an easy one at all. In grid one, Paul Pinfold. Grid two is John Hiscock. Grid three, Lennon Ray Foreman. Grid four, Mike Cameron. Grid five, Gary Jackson. And right on the outside, once again, is Richard Piggott and Martin Bailey. together as they go into that first corner but it really is a tremendous start once again for Richard Piggott. Great to see him back in this sort of form. John Hiscock is right up there in second place but on his outside is Mike Cameron and Paul Randall. Those two swapping and changing racing lines on that top bend. Mike Cameron looks to have got the best of it to come through for second place. John Hiscock. But as we look to the front and it come round to take the second lap this time, Richard Piggott and Martin Bailey lead from Mike Cameron and Paul Randall. Gary Jackson and Ian Harris tempting there to try and get through in the second place. Mike Cameron having done it. Going down the back straight to so in the second place. Look at the lead that Richard Piggott has got. He takes the last lap flag as he comes past us this time. Cameron's still up there in second, Gary Jackson still holding third, John Hiscock is still there in fourth. We look to see them go down to the back straight, he once again. Has he done enough to get through to the final? The question obviously will be answered by the point scorers. We'll wait and see the result of that. But there's another 
chequered flag this afternoon for Richard Bigot and Martin Bailey. Mike Cameron and Paul Randall get second, Gary Jackson and Ian Harris get third, and John Hiscock finishing in fourth spot. Field, this is the quad final.
Hurry comes up to 40. Meanwhile, then, Andy Smith. Andy Smith from Martin Hagen, from Trevor Banks, from Paul Hurry as they come down towards us. Mike Beaumont follows him through. And then it's Rob Cameron of Camden. Martin Hagen, the man, keeping the pressure hard on in second place. Trevor Banks in third, Paul Harry in fourth, Mike Beaumont in fifth, in sixth place. Number 19, Rob Camden. And then at number 12. Andy Smith, Banks, former schoolboy champion, ahead of Martin Hagen. Mike Beaumont now. Looks as though Paul Hurry may be in trouble there. He's dropped back a little bit. But looking at two our left. Time for the checkered flag. It's Andy Smith who's going to get there. Andy Smith wins. Martin Hagen in second place. Trevor Banks in third. Mike Beaumont in fourth. In fifth place is Paul Hurry. And in sixth place, number 19, Rob Camden. And a little way back, cruising around, but uh, going to complete race distance, is Bobby Graham. So then, Jeremy Doncaster going for yet another victory, I'm sure, here this afternoon. Will James has been getting better and better, and I am impressed by the way Gary Lobb's been riding. Here we go then. Down through the middle, it's Jeremy Doncaster from Gary Lobb. And Will James right there with him, and Peter Lloyd in fourth place. So then, Gary Lobb from Will James. The Cornish duo in second and third place. Lloyd in the third place, but Will James is right on his elbow. Meanwhile, it's Jeremy Doncaster who leads. Number six, Jeremy Doncaster flying down the hill ahead of Gary Long from Will James, from Peter Lloyd, from number 10, Richie Knights. Pulled off and headed back towards the paddock. Meanwhile, then it's Jeremy Doncaster. The two Cornishmen hard after him, Gary Long and Will James in second and third place. Then Peter Lloyd, then number 10, Richie Knight. second, Will James in third. Fourth place, Richie Knight, just ahead of Peter Lloyd, who dropped back on that lap. Alan, number nine, Mike Courage. The solo finalists then taking up their places on the start line. Interesting to see where the individual riders end up on the start line. I'm assuming that, uh, as is usual practice here, the top point scorer gets the first choice of uh, place on the grid. It looks like Andy Smith right on the inside. Then away, the start of the Jim Cole solo final for 1991. Trevor Banks making a good start. Clayton Williams making a good start. And Andy 
Smith goes round the inside of the pair of Andy Smith then. Clayton Williams. Then right up there is Jeremy Doncaster from Clayton Williams. Will James comes through. So then, two are there. And Jeremy Doncaster it is. Ahead of Clayton Williams in second place. And Trevor Banks has a little bit of a moment. Skips back to fourth place. Andy Smith in third. Will James in fifth. And on the far side then, it's all happening over there with Jeremy Doncaster. Flying on the coals to stay ahead of the opposition. Look at Andy Smith though, battling away. Andy Smith battling for uh, second place and Clayton Williams holds him off. Of course we can remember Andy Smith was a little skating about Clayton Williams a little while back. So Smithy goes by and Clayton Williams in third place. So it's Jeremy Doncaster, Andy Smith, Clayton Williams in that order. Let's go to back, then we'll change. Gary Long. Meanwhile then, they come round towards us once again, one more lap to go, and it's Jeremy Doncaster from Andy Smith from Clayton Williams. And he's quite a way away way of Trevor Banks now with Gary Long and Will James, and Will James looking to come through. Will James comes inside, and look at Andy Smith going up. Going up to Doncaster, two more men to go. Who's going to have it here? Andy Smith goes for the challenge. This is it, the last just for a start. It's, it's going to get there. then Will James, then Gary Lobb, and then Trevor Banks, then Gary Lobb, and then Will James, let's get it right, Whoa, what a challenge, on the line, and Andy Smith it was, who got there to win, Jeremy Doncaster in second place, Clayton Williams in third. Six, Russelling and Paul Urich. Number seven, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. Number one, Steve Jewison, Dave Ward. Number 21, Shane Baker, Clinton Martin. And number 24, Rob Wilson, Vince Jones. Well, I know I ask the questions always. Have you picked who's going to win? Well, what a difficult way to uh, try and decide who's going to win the 1991 Jim Coles final. I'm not even going to take any guesses this time. There are a lot of very good riders still sitting in the pits watching this one. We've got six of the top grass track sidecar crews on the line. We anxiously look across the far side to see that Roger Mesa sits in the middle of the gate. Just to that outside. Looks as if Rob Wilson is next to Roger Mesa. Steve Jerson's got the outside, the far outside that is, nearest the ropes. Rustling right on the very inside. Shane Baker next to Rustling. That completes the lineup. We're underway of the 1991 Jim Cole's final. As they go down the back straight, it's got six now. That first bend, Rustling is right up there. You can see Steve Jerson going the long way round, but it's Roger Meese has had to shoot inside. Shane Baker has come through on the inside line. The gaps were left by Rustling, but it is Shane Baker that's come through. Ken Lane is right up there as well in second. Rustling being forced to go a little bit wide. Shane Baker trying to close the gaps. There's problems for Ken Lane. There's problems for Steve Jordan as well. But it's three outfits. Rustling comes through the front once again in front of Shane Baker. Those two outfits almost together as they go into the top bend. And as you can see, Rob Wilson trying for the outside line. But Rustling, it is. It's got it at the moment from Shane Baker and Glenda Martin. Rustling and Paul Urich have now fought their way through to the front of that lineup. You can see Shane Baker and Glenda Martin still there in second. Rob Wilson and Glenda Martin still there in fourth place at the moment. But the lead is with the riders that were winning their first three qualifying rides, Rustling and Paul Urich. One more lap to go over Rustling and Paul Urich. Shane Baker and Glenda Martin still there in second. You can see the signals from Paul Urich. top corner, it's a checkered flag this time the 1991 Jim Coles goes to Russell and for your reach Shane Baker and Kinder Martin get second Rob Wilson and Vince Jones get third and Roger Misa is back in fourth place a tremendous ride from Russelling and Paul Urich. I'm sure you'll congratulate them as they come round. Well, the solo final was good. We expected a good one from the sidecar final. Full of incident as six of them together went into that first bend. There were a lot of gaps made. There were a lot of gaps opened. 
The eventual victors, they won it all on that first lap, I feel sure. They fought their way through. Shane Baker looked like he was going to have it, but Russell Ng come back at him. And it was Russell Ng and Paul Urich that have taken the 1991 Jim Coles. into the to the checkered flag after only two laps and it's Clayton Williams making another good start it's Clayton Williams who leads and back behind like that. And on in there so it's Clayton Williams from Trevor Banks and at the moment so Clayton Williams coming round the bend one more lap to go and Clayton Williams is right out ahead of the opposition at the moment Andy Smith in second place Trevor Banks in third Jeremy Doncaster back a little way having a battle there with Will James but uh, Clayton Williams is still in there he hangs on picks up the front wheel of his and then Paul Hurry. Well, given some of the publicised comments over the last few weeks, I think you can take it that Clayton Williams enjoyed that. Quick sidecars that appeared in that sidecar final, plus two others. One of them, of course, Richard Piggott and Martin Bailey, they had three wins this afternoon and one unlucky puncher. Gary Moon, he also had two wins in a second, plus one unlucky puncher, or I'm told electrical problem perhaps. So, two very quick outfits coming in to join the winner of the Jim Coles sidecar final. That, of course, was Russelling and Paul Urich. Second to them was Shane Baker and Clinton Martin. Third, Rob Wilson and Vince Jones. And also, Roger Misa and Steve Bailey. So a tremendous lineup of six outfits coming to the line. They look as if they're anxiously getting themselves sorted out. Of course, this one is all about cash. Dare I say there's a lot of uh, these riders enjoy taking prize money off uh, Ian Barkley, but I won't tempt fate too much because uh, I'm sure there's an awful lot of people who realize that already. And believe me, it might only be what turns out to be one and three quarter laps for the sidecars, but there will be 120% effort going in from every single one of those crews. Gary Moon, very disappointed not to be in the final. I'm sure he'll be trying to prove something here in this dash for cash. Some disastrous starts down at Tunbridge, but looks to have got things sorted out here this afternoon. Russelling and Paul Urich look to be flying at the moment will be of course on a very very high note because of winning the big final they made a tremendous start and they must know that Roger Misa and Steve Bailey missed the start in that sidecar final they'll be out perhaps to prove something in this one let's look at the lineup as they go across the line Roger Misa and Steve Bailey have been drawn on the inside Shane Baker, Clinton Martin in second spot Gary Moon, third spot working out from the inside. Next to them, Richard Piggott and Martin Bailey. Rob Wilson and Vince Jones in fifth grid. And right on the outside, Russelling and Paul Urich. That's how they line up. Just about to come into line. They get underway. We go for the desk. We catch for the sidecars. It is Richard Piggott has made the break from the line. Right there with him. Roger Beeson moving through on the inside. So again, it's going to be all out. It's going into this first bend together as they bunch up in the middle of the corner. They start to break as they come out the exit of the bend. And Rob Wilson has come through the inside. A great ride from Rob Wilson. Rob Wilson dives through the gaps on the inside. He and Vince Jones now get into the lead. Shane Baker turns it round but manages to hang on to it. A good bit of work from Linda Martin there as he looks to see. Richard Piggott catching up now. On the Piggott Piggott with a great ride. He loses the checkered flag this time round. One more corner negotiated. He comes out of the exit of that bend. It's Richard Piggott. And Martin Bailey to come through, and Richard Piggott takes it. Rob Wilson second, Gary Moon comes through for third. A great top corner from Gary Moon. Well, I don't think I can handle too many of them in a season. 
That was all a little bit too quick. What a lot of changing went on. A great ride there from Rob Wilson. He took the advantage on that first corner. Richard Wiggett come back at him and come underneath him. He indeed took the chequered flag.